Welcome back to Triplicate and today bench power supplies. So this is my bench power supply of I decided at least 15 years old and uh, at one point a few weeks ago I blew up the 12 volt out but it's got a 0 to 30 a 12 and a 5 uh, and made a video about uh, my repair to that and well 15 years um, not a thing wrong with it a couple of weeks later I blew up the main output I connected an 18 volt drill battery the wrong way around uh, I believe it's fixable but I really couldn't uh, be bothered to take it apart again and fix it again and I will get round to it at some point and I was thinking, okay, it's fine, but like the voltage and current setting, they're pots, so you can't set them particularly accurately, uh, which sometimes it's very useful to do. So I thought it was time I bought myself a new power supply for doing um, sort of electronic things on and keep this for doing dodgy things like charging at batteries. So I bought... A Tenma. This is a 72-2685 and Tenmas I'd used those in my last uh, work and the Farnells sell them so they're not you know unbranded dodgy stuff straight out of China I'm not sure it's made in China like everything is uh, so it's um, three, 30 volts 3 amps so I thought, um, rather than sort of unpacking it from the box on camera, I'd open it up, use it a bit, and then I'd have a little sort of uh, review come tutorial when I got myself familiar with it. Um, which is now. Okay, so there are quite a number of identical looking power supplies that have uh, different model numbers and... Um, the bottle numbers aren't exactly intuitive as to what the power supplies are. So here I compiled a little table, um, mostly for my own benefit, as to what model numbers do what. And as you can see, there are four different voltage current ratings for uh, the supply, and each one can either have remote control via USB or serial. Uh, or not have remote control and mine is the base model the lowest voltage current and no remote control that one okay then so let's have a look what we've got so quick look around the back normal power connector and it came with the power lead which was nice and a fan I guess in case it gets too hot and that made in China. What a surprise. So if we look round the front. Now my old power supply. I just shuffle this into shop. Just came with a voltage knob and a current knob. And that was it and they were pots. And the trouble is with power supplies is with anything else once it goes digital once you put a micro in it the tendency is to put lots of buttons on and lots of features on uh, which is all very well but then it tends to be a bit of a a pain to operate sometimes if you just want to set the thing up to to run whatever project you're running uh, my old one with the two pots were uh, at least very nice and simple so that attracted me to this. We've got a, a current control and a voltage control and they are both encoders. You might be able to hear them clicking as I turn them. And they both have push knobs. So apart from that we have a nice big blue on button. Uh, positive, negative, ground and current display, voltage display and some mode LEDs which we will come to. 
So let's power it up. Okay, power lead in. So if I press the big button, on it comes. And yes, you have the voltage and the current displays. And that's saying it's a current volt, constant voltage of 18 volts. And it's not drawing any current because nothing's connected. So, it works in two modes. Currently, this LED is saying we are adjusting the 1 volt uh, value, number. And that's on always the t all the time, as you can see that. And we're adjusting the 100 milliamp number. As you turn this, it's showing you what it's adjusted to and you let go and it very quickly it goes back to the actual current which again is zero because there's nothing connected and the other mode it does there we go we press both buttons for two seconds now these knobs don't do anything unless you press the button uh, and if you press the button just to just switch digits you go to similarly with this and you can set it up to nearest 10 millivolts and 1 milliamp okay so far so good and it also has a lock feature so you lock the voltage and if you press the button accidentally and you, know, you knock it and adjust the knob you can't change it if you want to lock it to a given voltage it also has another clever feature on the amps called OCP which stands for stands for overcurrent protection okay so if I've put it in overcurrent protection mode and we see it's producing 18 volts but if I if something goes wrong in which case I will simulate by shorting the output now the output drops to zero while it's shorted together And if I release the output, the voltage stays at zero until I press the button. So if something horrible has happened to the electronics, it's not trying to put the current limit current through it. It just finishes and that's it. And you can uh, have a look, see what's gone wrong before you, uh, before you power the circuit up again. Which brings me to the display. Now... Strangely, in the camera, little camera display, it looks okay, but to me, it looks super dim. And this is to me with one working eye, because the other one hasn't recovered yet. But I can barely see that display, and I'm sort of trying to shade it to see what it is. So, as I say, it. it doesn't actually look bad in the camera display and my partner Angela said oh yes I can see that that's fine uh, but I cannot read that display without squinting at it and there we go if I shade it I can see it's a bit better but it's still super dim but why the camera picks it up okay I don't know okay so I bought this thing off Farnell and here we see the uh, Farnell uh, website page for the thing and they show it not running so I did a uh, well a very nominal bit of research and found there we go there's their tutorial video and looked and that oh yes a nice bright display but wait a minute and I've only actually just discovered this when I came back on here. If we hover over this image, we get an expanded view and there we go. 
A super dim dark blue display. Hmm. So I complained to Farnell that there was, must be something wrong with the display and they said they didn't think so, but if I didn't want it anymore, send it back. And, well, I had another eye operation. I had to have another eye operation, so I never quite got round to sending it back. And it does do what I want it to do, uh, apart from the fact I can't see the display. So there you go. If you're thinking of buying one of these... Uh, if you work like I do next to a window you might struggle with the display um, power supply to be used with the blinds down or at night okay so shall we see how it performs so we have here a car light bulb which is 21 watts and 5 watts 26 watts total, so out of 12 volts, that's 2 and some amps. Okay, so that one's voltage and that one's current. So we have the positive of the power supply going to the positive of the voltmeter and the positive of the current meter, the negative of the current meter, the negative of the current meter goes to the positive of the bulb and the negative of the bulb goes to the negative of the power supply and the negative of the voltmeter. Okay, I don't know, it's a bit of a, a rat's nest but there you go. So here's the bulb and I am going to drop that over the edge of the desk so it's not blinding the camera. Okay so I will take the positive out of the current meter so no current will flow. Let me see what we've got here. 12 volts and if I press that 100 milliamps. So if I put this in We get 12 volts there and no current. Why? Okay, EFI connection. So we're in constant current mode. It says 99 milliamps there and 104 there. And that's gone right down. So now we will wind up the current limit. Oh, right, and let's just show you this for now. So the bulb's starting to come on. get to there and uh, the fan comes on ah, so now it's at 12 volts now I get rid of this bulb again so now it's at 12 volts and 2.46 amp there and 2.48 hair under 12 volts there which I can accept is losing a bit down some of these wires so that's good and that is not the quietest of fans ever there we go never mind So, just out of interest, we've disconnected the bulb. I'll put it on the camera, yep, disconnected the bulb. And we'll see how long it takes for the fan to turn off again.
That's winding itself down. And to be fair, most of the time I shall be using it at quite low power so the fan won't need to come on. Okay, here we go. go on. The bulb in shot. Oh, you'll see it there. There we go. Bulb on again. Hum from the transformer. It is linear power supply. Forgot to mention that. And up comes the fan again. And should we see how noisy it is? Turned off at the minute, and I've put the voltmeter onto volts AC, and it's showing 13 volts. 13 millivolts or thereabouts. So if I turn it on, no load. About similar. So here we go. Let's add our light bulb by way of load. I could. There we go. And still about 13 millivolts, so that's alright, it's nice and quiet, seemingly. Okay, so there you have it. And in conclusion, I would say it's a nice little unit. Easy to use, does exactly what I want, let down by a really dim display, which I'm sure I shall struggle to be able to see even when my eyes back to normal. Uh, so that's it for this video, I made it just a, a little quickie while I'm preparing other videos, other projects. Uh, so please keep subscribing, uh, leave a comment if you've got something to say, and I'll see you on the next one. So for now it's goodbye from Triplicate, home of interesting electronics. Goodbye.